Hi. Today I thought I would talk about some of the things that meditation isn't. Now I get a lot of um, questions about what to do when X arises or um, descriptions of experiences in meditation which seem to be special or somehow uh, outside of the normal course of meditation and thus outside of what we should expect one to uh, deal with in an ordinary fashion. Um, often what people will experience are things like lights or colors or pictures, visions. Um, sometimes people will experience very quiet, calm states or very focused and intense states, blissful states, uh, states of rapture, similar as you'd find in other religious traditions. Um, sometimes there will be the arising of knowledge on a mundane level, uh, coming to understand things about one's life or so on. Sometimes there will be great um, levels of energy or uh, it's kind of like a static electricity that arises in the mind. All sorts of many special states or states which could be labeled as special. And so I just wanted to deal with them here briefly, sort of to give a, a, a bit of a warning to people. Not regarding these states themselves, because there's nothing dangerous about any of these states in and of themselves, but a warning not to get um, misled by these states. That thinking that they are indeed somehow special, somehow higher, somehow the way, the path, or the goal of meditation. Because whatever special state arises, it in the end will eventually disappear, will go away. So if we hold on to it as being special in whatever way, then it's going to lead us to an imbalance in our perception and in our acceptance of reality, when in fact these states are all simply natural, uh, ordinary states of mind. It's just that they're not ordinary to people who haven't practiced meditation. If you haven't practiced meditation, these states will seem to be uh, somehow outside of mundane reality. It's just that, in fact, um, the, the, the reason that we don't experience them is that we our ordinary states of reality are not meditative states of reality. That's that's the only reason. When these things come up, they are ordinary. They're ordinary to a meditative state, and they should thus be treated as as any other meditative uh, experience. So, just as when we have, say, pain in the in the legs or so on, and we would say to ourselves, "Pain, pain," and just treat it as as what it is. The same when we see see visions or when we um, obtain special, what we would call special experiences. So when we see visions, we should say to ourselves, seeing, as if we were seeing something ordinary in our everyday life. Just say to ourselves, seeing, 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 until the vision goes away. Just using it as an object of meditation and coming to see it clearly as it is. If we feel happy, states of bliss or so on, we can say to ourselves, happy, happy, uh, blissful. If we feel calm or quiet, we can say to ourselves, calm, calm. Just reminding ourselves uh, of exactly what's going on so that we don't uh, get caught up and become in, entranced or enchanted by these uh, simple, ordinary meditation states that happen for mo occur for most people. I think this is one of the um, most often asked questions that I get, and so I think it's probably worth it to to write to make this sort of a video to explain uh, what's going on here that these states they come from meditation specifically from mostly coming from high states of concentration and it's a perfectly natural thing to occur there's no reason to be afraid of them but there is certainly no reason to uh, become uh, attached to them or to um, to make more of them than they actually are and to think that somehow they are the path that we should follow and pursue and encourage and develop. They certainly aren't. The path that we should follow and pursue and encourage and develop is the acceptance, the awareness and the um, acknowledgement of things, the um, clear awareness and understanding of things as they are. So whatever arises, we see it for what it is and not liking it or disliking it or becoming partial or, or intoxicated by it. 
And of course, that's exactly what happens with these special states if we're not careful. So for this reason, uh, I think it's important to sort of warn everybody, not that something dangerous is going to happen. It is possible, truly, that if you follow after any state, it can lead you to states of, of insanity. I mean, you could drive yourself crazy chasing after and developing these states people who develop special uh, states of trance or so on can actually, um, I mean, there are cases where they would actually, so to speak, drive themselves crazy. Um, there's nothing dangerous with the states in and of themselves. It's the attitude of the meditator that becomes so wound up and so caught up and so interested and keen and, and attached to something that it, it, it ends up you know, releasing in an explosion of temporary insanity. So. There is that warning, and mostly what's going to happen instead is people will just become afraid and think that it's something uh, too much, or, or they don't understand it. These things should be understood as they are, that there's nothing dangerous or special in, an, in these things in and of themselves, and we shouldn't treat them like that, or for sure we lead to suffering and, and uh, discontent when they disappear, or suffering when we chase after them and therefore uh, drive ourselves crazy or, or any number of things could happen. So thanks for tuning in. This is just um, a, a little bit of explanation on what the meditation is not. Um, it's, an, it's not any special state that we might experience. It's the clear awareness and understanding of all states and the impartiality which comes therefrom. So thanks for tuning in and uh, hope to see you all uh, commenting and, and sending your comments in. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later.